You, yeah, I'm talking to you. Do you need some help with your bag? How'd I know? Lucky guess. Nah, I'm just playing. Most of you guys are confused out there, which is why I'm here to help. This wouldn't be a Birdogi video if I didn't start it off with a Clash disc. I don't even have to say it, and you already know what I'm talking about. Psych! I'm talking about the Soda, an understable fairway driver that most disc golfers should be able to get a flip out of the box. If you haven't found a disc that flips for you, check out the Soda. For those with a faster arm, it works great in the woods for quick flip-up hyzers that you need to bend around tight trees. Every arm can find a use for this disc. And if you're going to keep bitching that it's too flippy, watch the Soda roll for days. Instead of going with the DD3, try out the Enigma, a slightly more understable distance driver that should allow disc golfers long drives. Now I know you're excited. A lot of players out there feel like they need to go with whatever basic destroyer like disc a company has. This is the DD3, Zeus, Raider, Scorpius, you name it. If your phone still flips, I already know you bag a Comet or Meteor. I think either is acceptable, but apparently that's not a popular opinion. Well, let me rephrase that. You will never catch me personally bagging either of them. But I do think most disc golfers out there can find their next go-to mid-range with either one they pick. I used to play in a league with two brothers, I would say around 50 years old. You would have thought they threw the same discs, but nope, just nearly identical bags except for a couple of discs, and the biggest being the mid-range selection. One would throw the comment while the other the meteor. Best part was, the brothers never spoke a word to each other, and it was an unsaid rule in the league that they would never be on the same card. I was told because of some family drama, but I keep telling myself it's actually from the meteor comment feud. I don't know why old people and understable mids go together, but they just do. Seven speeds must be called Chris because everyone hates them. I make myself laugh. I don't even care what you guys think at this point. But for real, get yourself an infinite centurion. No matter the skill of a player, this fairway will be able to find a use in their bag. The Exodus might have a negative 0.5 turn, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Why make arbitrary numbers more complicated? The Destroyer has a minus one turn, yet... 90% of disc golfers can't get that shit to flip up even the slightest. That being said, you probably should check the Exodus out, a manageable disc that even slow arm speed players should be able to control in the fairways. If you like to play smart and not worry about something your arm can't handle, first, I like to say good for you, then I would point you in this disc's direction. Seven speeds really are some of the most overlooked in disc golf, and even saying that, I can't think of another one off the top of my head. But yeah, check out the Centurion and the Exodus. Ever had the thought of your distance driver behaving like a powerhouse racing car? Well, if you have, you're in luck. Because someone over at Finish Line thought it was a smart idea to describe the interval just like that. If you've been ignoring me for the past month or are new around here, which if that's the case, drop a sub, it helps the channel. Get rid of your destroyer and throw this in the bag. It's the same shit, except should allow for more turn for the slower arms out there and less significant fade. And in all honesty, if it flies just like your destroyer, you're in the same place you started. Where is that, you might be asking? Still needing a wraith is how I would reply. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I talk about the time I bagged 7 destroyers. Well, that was before I took disc golf seriously. And I was only 17, so I was young and dumb while Innova was asking what disc to send me. No shit I was loading up on destroyers. I would soon move away from the courses that I've been playing for years to my new home course while I attended college. If I was going to compare the courses to the new one, it was dog shit. And that's if I was being nice. But it did allow me to change my entire disc golf game. I used to be able to throw drives at full power without any consequence for, for most being so open, filled with par 4s. Now I only had a single hole over 300 feet, narrow fairways, and never a reason to throw anything above a mid-range. For someone who despised the feeling of mids and putters, I was in trouble. After going 4 down my first round through, I knew my starting point. Being new to college, I didn't know what to do on the first day, so instead of going to my scheduled freshman orientations, I went to the first disc golf practice. This would be the first time in my life I realized my love for disc golf could be shared with others who felt the same. I never had this in person before, only online, and my world had been opened. I went from playing disc golf a lot in the summer to playing disc golf a lot all of the time. I soon became friends with other disc golfers, and there would not be a day I didn't play around. Yeah, I didn't have a life to say the least. We would constantly be throwing in the field next to the Ultimate Frisbee team, making sure they knew what throwing a disc 500 feet looked like. But it was in that field on a late night under the soccer lights while smashing natural lights and frisbees as we did every night. My friend Justin, who was the punching bag for maxing out at 400 feet, told me to try one of his wraiths. At the time, I was stubborn in my ways, thinking I was above that with my classic destroyer mindset. And if you're guessing what I was compensating for, you could already guess it. 
Of course, all I needed was to be challenged to outdrive him with his own disc. And after that night, I bagged two wraiths. I know you're watching, Justin, so fuck you for being right, and thank you for saving my disc golf game. Unfortunately, my first year of collegiate disc golf would be canceled due to COVID, and the same would go for my sophomore year. Now as a junior and three years of consistent practice, I would have the opportunity to play in my first collegiate national championship. We would travel from Wisconsin to North Carolina to play on the North Cove property. It was beautiful. And one of my favorite memories was stepping up to hole 18 on the gorge, one of the hardest holes I've ever played to this day. I would go on to throw my drive, which felt like the best I'd ever thrown, only to miss the landing zone by a few feet. Instead, clip the rock and go OB. The best way to end the tournament, to lose our top 10 spot. Which doesn't sound all that crazy, but we were the only team in that position with no previous history, no rankings, no experience, and to only be a few strokes off getting filmed. So all in all, pretty cool. Taking 12th out of 36 isn't too bad either. But one day, I'll have to tell you guys how I almost got not only myself disqualified from the tournament, but my entire team. Comment down below if you want to hear that story, but for now, I'll get back to some recommendations. I'm only recommending the Wraith because I know at your arm speed, there's no way your ego would allow you to bag a turn, even if it wasn't Halo Plastic. I'll let you in on a secret. Just bag the turn. Why hurt your game because of your insecurities? Along the same line, most of you out there need to suck it up and start throwing the Mamba. If you can't get anything else to flip, I'm sorry for you, but give this disc a shot. Most players see the minus five turn and think it's too flippy, but it's like they've never heard of Heiser before. Not only that, but I'm sure half of them will not even get this thing to hold the entire way anyway. I'm just saying it how it is. The Cinnamon! Oh, sorry, I finally thought of another seven speed I know of, the Clash Disc Cinnamon, a stable fairway driver that allows players to put some power behind their low distance shots. If you want to throw hard yet still know you won't go 400 plus, check it out. It even holds on Disc Golf Jesus flex lines, so you won't have to worry about turning this thing over forever. I'm convinced you can't beat Clash's plastic, and that's a hill I'm willing to die on. Just like keeping dynamic out of your bag. It's one of the biggest sins in Disc Golf, I swear. And if you even mention bagging a truth, I might throw up. On that note, I gotta end the video here. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to not miss out on any more story times like this. Oh, and if you want to see me shame my subscribers' discs, check out the video right here.